Just weeks after the Colombian peace accords were rejected by the narrowest of margins in a referendum last summer, President Manuel Santos and the FARC rebel leader signed a revised agreement to end the 50-year conflict. The new deal was approved by Congress and the FARC disarmament deadline is next week, but critics still believe it's too soft on the guerrillas. Earlier I spoke to one of the deal's most vocal critics, former Vice President Francisco Santos. I began by asking why he opposed an agreement that has been backed by the UN Secretary General, the European Union, the US government and the Pope. Well, we don't oppose the peace negotiation or the peace deal. We oppose the conditions under which peace was, uh, was uh, framed. As a matter of fact, in a plebiscite, uh, the majority of Colombians voted no. Uh, so it's not only us. We represent uh, uh, a large section of Colombian society that think the criminals of, uh, of uh, crimes against humanity should go to jail for a little time. We're not saying 30 years, 40 years. We, were, we, we said uh, it could be four or five years. Uh, we didn't want them to go to, jail, to, to, to maximum security jails. They could stay in their, uh, in their camps to, to, to purge the, the sentence. So in that sense, we didn't think it was such a, a tough bargain. And, and that's one of the things that, that people, if, if you tell me the two reasons why Colombians uh, voted no, one was that they weren't going to pass a day in jail. As a matter of fact, they don't. And two, because they were immediately, uh, especially war criminals, go into, into, into politics. So, so, so I think uh, Colombians have a higher standard of justice than, okay. than the Nobel Peace Prize and, and, and uh, the international community. Just to be clear, though, just for our viewers watching around the world, Colombians voted no to the peace deal by 50.2% to 49.8%. It was very yes. narrow. It was not some clear overall majority. I think it was 55,000 votes out of 13 million people. Yes, yes, but the no is a no. You know, in democracy, yep. one vote is enough. And, uh, and I think uh, it, it was, uh, as a matter of fact, everybody was surprised. Everybody thought uh, the, the yes was going to win by 60, by 70, by 80 uh, percent. But, but I think Colombians felt that they needed to send a message to the president and to the FARC, and that message is still alive. OK, but well, let me just ask you this. At this stage, with the FARC already having started to disarm, they're now in transition camps, how would a candidate from your conservative uh, Democratic Centre Party, if they were to win the next presidential election in 2018 in Colombia, how would they even uh, rip up this peace deal? Is it even possible to now rip up this peace deal, which has been passed by both houses of Congress, which is now being enacted, implemented? To be very sincere, some elements of my party want to rip it up and to, and to tell them, go back to the mountains and, uh, and let's start again. I don't think so, and and this is a position that sometimes carries within my party a little bit of a, of an stigmatization. I think we can do some very clear adjustments to the to the process, put the judicial system within some controls of the of the formal uh, judicial system in Colombia, the, the Justicia Especial para la Paz. Those who don't comply will get the full treatment of the law. Here, if they don't comply. Uh, they can, they can get involved in the process even at the last moment. No, you have to make a decision. You go in or you don't. So, so uh, uh, how are you going to repair victims and how victims are going to be treated? I think there are elements within the accord that can be improved and which uh, weren't. It is worth pointing out, though, isn't it, that the regions most affected by the violence actually voted in favor of the peace deal. For example, in Turbo and other such areas, they actually voted. It's the, it's the regions most distant from the war that voted against the peace deal. Isn't that true? No, not true. Huila, um, the epicenter of the FARC, uh, the, the no vote won. Caquetá, where the FARC secretariat was, voted no. Um, many, many areas. Caribio, which was heavily affected by violence, voted 84% in favor of the peace deal. Yeah, I know. That's a little town, but, but uh, in, uh, in, in the Cauca region. Obviously, there are states where, where they voted uh, yes, they okay. voted no. But I think to, to go into that distinction is just uh, missing the point. The country split. Okay, let me and ask you this. That's a fair point. Let me ask you this. Um, why do you think the FARC would just agree to a new peace deal which involves heavier penalties on them? Why wouldn't they just walk away from the table if somebody from your party becomes president and says, you know what, we're not honoring that deal? It's a risk we have to take, to be very sincere. 50 it's a risk years we have war, to, take. to restart 50 years of well, war. That's a risk you're willing to take. Uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure they... They, they tasted uh, the, the honey of freedom. They tasted the honey of, uh, of uh, power. Uh, they understand what that... What you're proposing uh, that, takes uh, away that honey of freedom, by definition. No, not, not necessarily. Not necessarily. I think, I think there are adjustments that can be made. And, okay. and you know, 
They, they got into democracy. Welcome to democracy. You lose, you lose. Francisco Santos, during the period that you were vice president of Colombia, Human Rights Watch say that your military killed hundreds, possibly thousands of civilians, and then tried to fal falsely pass them off as combatants, even dressing up their corpses to make them look like fighters. Human Rights Watch say it was, quote, one of the worst episodes of mass atrocity in the Western Hemisphere in recent decades. That was on your watch. Well, uh, first of all, they're being investigated. There have been... Uh... Uh, some members of the military who are being accused and who are being, as a matter of fact, all of those members of the military are going to come out, are going to, are going to come out in this, in this, in this deal. Uh, whomever committed those atrocities in the deal with the FARC is covering all the members of the military, which we opposed. Okay. Because we but, said, but what about the fact that they did those don't... crimes and you were vice president? Did you know about them? Did you know the military were carrying out these crimes at the time? As a matter of fact, I worked with the Human Rights uh, uh, UN Human Rights Commission to do an investigation on those, and under our watch was that those started, and a lot of the, of them were condemned and stopped. So, 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 yeah. When uh, when when we found out that that was happening, we put a stop to it. The United Nations say it was systematic. This wasn't some isolated incident carried out by rogue soldiers. The UN say it was systematic under human rights law. The five thousand no, uh, victims. Five thousand. As a matter of fact, the president of uh, Colombia right now was Ministry of Defense then. And uh, with him, we worked very closely to, to and we put a commission that, that, that looked into it, stopped them, fired many uh, generals and, uh, and, and colonels and who were involved, and put them to, to go into the judicial system. So, so, so sometimes mistakes happen. And when oh, those mistakes, on, mistakes happen, mistakes? we have Nearly 3,000 murders recorded by 2012. In 2007, no. one in every five combat deaths was a false positive. That's a mistake? Uh, you know, one of the things is that uh, part of the political war by the guerrillas was dressing guerrillas as, uh, as false positives. They, they, they worked very well doing that. And uh, what we've said is, let the judicial system work. So we put a Although stop I'm into confused. it. But, I'm uh, confused. A moment ago, you said these were horrific, horrible crimes. We prosecuted the people who did it. Now you're suggesting they weren't crimes. Oh, yeah. They were all made up by the FARC. Which no, no, one no, is no, it? No, 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 no. It's both. It's both. Okay. All of this, of course, was all of this, of course, was part of Plan Colombia, the U.S. back strategy to militarize uh, Colombia's role in the war on drugs, try to push the FARC back into the jungle, destroy the coca crops. But with cocaine production still rampant in Colombia, tens of thousands of deaths later, massive human rights violations. Do you regret pursuing such a disastrous policy, a policy amnesty called a failure in every respect? Not at all. If I had to do it again, I would do it again. Uh, one, two. Uh, when we left Colombia, we left uh, with power in 2010. Uh, the reduction in violence was dramatic. Unfortunately, the, 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 the president right now uh, took, the, took the reins of, of the security issues. And uh, now we have uh, 200,000 uh, hectares of coca. We left it in 40,000. The business was diminishing. And unfortunately, when you have a business as big as that one, criminal organizations will use it to generate violence. So, so, so it's something that needs to be persistent in time. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and yes, if well, you said uh, I, would, I would do it again. And, than, and I think if okay, we get... Well, let, me, let me put this to you. More than 57,000 Colombians are estimated to have been killed between 1994 and 2008. But you say you would do it again, despite that level of can violence. I, well, that's, well, that's uh, uh, just... To give you a statistic, in 2002, Colombians, 30,000 Colombians were killed every year. In 2010, 15,000. So we reduced the, 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 the murder rate, which is very high. And I have to agree, it's very, very, very high, by 50%. That means that our security policy saved at least, at least, at least 150,000 lives. Francisco Santos, thank you very much for joining me on Upfront. Thank you very much. That's our show. Upfront will be back next week.